wicked, wicked fly. This is your summer. That means Six Flags in the taste of an ice cold Coca Cola. We're talking thrilling coasters, delicious burgers, yes. real moments together, and this. Coke is summer refreshment when you need it most, so you can hop on another ride or race down a slide at the water park. Six Flags and Coca Cola. Come make it yours. Visit sixflags.com slash coke to save up to $20 on passes, plus daily tickets starting at $34.99. Well, this is crazy. A student pilot was flying solo. He's a student pilot, by the way. When he ran out of gas, Ugh. he's flying a plane. He's not driving a car uh, on Friday and had to land on the interstate in Missouri. Gee. And he got lucky. I mean, he got lucky that he didn't kill anybody. He just kept getting lower and kept going and getting lower, and I'm going... WTF, and then next minute I go, I go, holy crap, and he hit the interstate. He gave me a hug and thanked me for blocking traffic and saying that he was glad that he didn't hit nobody. And he is one lucky person. If he hadn't have landed that plane the way he landed it, he could have went over the barrier, and it was like a 20-foot drop into a river. Mm. This Dang. just happened in North Carolina, too, about a week ago. And the guy safely landed the plane on the highway. They have a video of it. Mm -hmm. And he went under the wires that were coming across, barely oh, missed wow. it. And cars are like, what it is was happening? surreal. And they mm -hmm. like watch out of the way, and he safely landed the plane, no injuries. Well, oh, that's interesting. They have a video. Intoxicated, this guy. Yeah, he um he was drunk. Oh, really? Yeah. He was drunk and they found pot on him and also a gun. So I don't I think Jeez. he's gonna get kicked uh kicked out of the program. Yeah, I don't oh know if he could be a pilot. Gosh. Mm -hmm. Or is he the greatest pilot of all time? I don't know. <laughs> He yeah, at 2.30 in the morning on the highway and then kind of banged into the guardrail and that's it. Like, how do you Jeez. explain that? You know, yeah. you have to, uh, you're going to have to explain it to somebody. Yeah. Well, are they saying that the reason why it went down has to do with anything he did? Well, he ran out of gas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he probably was too <laughs> intoxicated to realize he was, he was about to run out of fuel. <laughs> I'll be fine. I can make it. He's like, in the air, did I put gas in? I can't remember. <laughs> like, put gas in. He puts weed in the car. <laughs> oh, that gas. He flew from Kansas City, uh, Kansas City to Florida, and then he was on his way back. So, yeah, he almost made it. I would take that as the ultimate win. You survived it. Yeah. Nobody else was hurt. Right. I'm going to mm -hmm. hang it up. I'm done. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. I wonder, yeah. though, now that you make a point, if somebody, if a pilot has been drinking, not the commercial airlines ones, but just the your own private plane, mm -hmm. you can't really get pulled over. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, how are they going to know? They won't. Guess they wouldn't. No, just dangerous. Yeah. And there used to be, there used to be the case that there was a high level of alcoholism with commercial airline pilots yeah. for whatever yeah. reason. I don't know what the correlation is. they was. have to do mm. some kind of testing before they go I, on? I think, they, yeah, they crack down on it somehow. Well, remember, you know, flying used to be so luxurious. Yes. You know, if you could mm -hmm. do, if you could fly, you were, it was like living the lifestyle. And then it was, we're jet setting here, we're jet setting there, the flight attendants, you know, it was like, remember um, remember the show we used to watch? I know it's just TV, but um, Pan, Pan Am. Am. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it was so luxurious and the captains were like heroes. Right, like so, sex yeah. symbols. Yeah. And there was a majority of of the people that flew used to dress up too. Oh yeah, used to have yeah. mm -hmm. suits on and all this stuff. If you're looking, the side note: if you're looking for a, uh, I don't know if people like crime documentaries and mm -hmm. Netflix, something to binge watch. It's four episodes. It's uh, talking about flying. It's the documentary about DB Cooper. Oh, it's the only person ever in the history of the world to hijack a plane, get money, and to never be caught. Yep. And what? in this documentary, I watched it all. Yeah. In this documentary, they think they have a very good case for who they think it really was, and they actually confront him. As a um, no. grown man. Whoa, he's mm. still alive. And what, what was he like? What, he has nothing to do. He's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and he had a he has like a yacht that says um, poverty sucks. Oh, <gasps> like, like a nice boat. But uh, yeah. So did he? He jumped out of the plane, right? He jumped and out. Then of the he, but who was flying it? So it was a commercial plane, uh -huh. and this is in the 70s, 71. So um, they're going from Seattle. It was like a short flight. It was like a thirty minute flight. I think it's within the same state, like Seattle to Portland, something weird. Uh -huh. And um. He said, gave the flight attendant a note and said, I want $200,000 in cash and or I'm going to um, detonate this bomb. He opened up his briefcase and he had what at least looked like a bomb. Mm -hmm. They never verified if it was real or anything, but it looked like one. And she goes to the pilot and they land, let everyone get off the plane. He had him shut all the windows so snipers couldn't shoot in. And sure enough, the government gave him $200,000 in cash, which at, that would be like a time. million. It'd be a million dollars now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Then they took back off, and then he had a certain place they wanted him to go, and he opens the back of the, back of the plane. It was different then, mm -hmm. like because uh, they had this, something with the stairs. It was the planes were different, 
I said the side door. It was like the back of a plane, like a cargo plane. But it was a commercial mm-hmm. plane. He goes to the steps and, oh, and he ordered four parachutes from the government. Okay. Or from you know, when he did the threat because he said he was going to take hostages. So oh, they, so they couldn't way, get him faulty. They couldn't give him a, a yeah. dummy one. And so he, they said he was really smart. And then he just goes to the back of the plane in the middle of the night. It's it's raining outside. Jumps out. And they never found him. Never they found say. him. Mm. Well, but there's there was a lot of suspicions that he died. There was suspicions he died. And then this documentary, it kind of leaves it open. It could be multiple people, but mm-hmm. there's pretty strong evidence on one guy. And they confront him as an adult. It's very well done. If you're wow. looking for a crime documentary, it's like but four episodes. Don't they have video of the airport of this person, what he looks like? Not in the 70s. Yeah, not se- yeah 70s. Oh, they really? said there was, and they said uh, airline security in the 70s, non-existent. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, anyone could just walk well, in and had, out of plane. They had hijackings then. They did. They started but to. I wonder, uh, you know, and why did he, why did the pilots go back in the plane once everybody was off? Why didn't they say, okay. I well. know. Oh, I think he, they ordered for the pilot. They said if the pilots left the plane, he would detonate the bomb. So he had that bomb and as I, the And threat. I don't think yeah. we pay, because that's kind of a hostage situation. I don't think we pay anymore. Do we? If, if, if they don't broadcast it, if they do. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I think they have, and it gets out sometimes, but they're not supposed to. We ever found Amelia Earhart or no? No. <laughs> we never did? No. We never have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just wondering. It's weird. Yeah. Like, where do these people go? I know. They're flying and they're just gone. Well, if you know, we wake up really, really early. And so I don't think that this kind of thing would bother us because we were so used to being awake at this time. But at 6 a.m., on like a 6 a.m. flight, I think it was for Southwest, a flight attendant gets on, you know, the intercom and does this. <laughs> No thanks. Mm -mm. Evening flight, maybe. Mm. Not not in the morning. Six a.m. Didn't tell anybody. Mm. Just gets on the microphone and starts belts that out. I'd be like, I cannot. No, isn't Mm -mm. Southwest known to do these like funny little things? I think they're like more relaxed, but no thanks. (laughs) (laughs) It's too early for that. Don't evening flight. I think they're.